It's been a while since I've done an instrument review, so today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing this Glory Piccolo that I got off of Amazon for about $67. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Lance. I'm a professional flutist and teacher, and my goal is to inform and inspire your flute practice. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Glory Piccolo from Amazon, and some of the things I'll be covering today are the technical specs for this instrument. I'll be doing an unboxing and a play test. I will be reading some of the top reviews on Amazon for this piccolo. And finally, I'll be giving you some of my conclusions as to what I think about this instrument and whether or not I think it's worth your time and money. In case you haven't already seen them, please check out my reviews for the cheapest flutes I could find on Amazon by Glory and Mendini, and I'm going to put links to those in the description as well as up in the cards. Also, for more flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, so here we go with the unboxing. So as you can see, it just came in this plain white box. On the inside, we have the case wrapped in plastic. As you can see, it says Glory on the front. There's a Velcro closure here for the two handles. And the case just zips open and shut. I'm going to take a look in the outer pocket to see what we have there. We have some gloves, which you all have told me this is for marching band. Um, so this could be very useful, I guess, if you're using this as a marching piccolo. I don't have much use for those. Okay. It looks like there is some kind of cleaning cloth. This feels fairly nice. Feels like it's more for the outside than the inside, maybe. Is there anything else in there? Just this screwdriver that fell out. When I did my Glory Flute review, I think I remember that this screwdriver didn't even really fit or work very well into the flute. So I'm gonna give that a try later to see if this actually works with the instrument. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open the case so we can see inside. Okay, so as you can see, the piccolo is wrapped in plastic and there's also a little thing of joint grease. Now, if you've seen my other reviews, you'll know that this joint grease is pretty much useless. Unless you're dealing with cork, a cork connection, um, you don't really wanna use this. For metal to metal, the best way to improve the connection, if it's a little bit tight, for example, is to just clean both ends of the connection with some rubbing alcohol and a soft cloth. So this, don't worry about it, you can throw it away. I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap the individual pieces. Here's the head joint. As you can see, there is a lip plate um, that looks a lot like a flute lip plate. On some wooden piccolos, for example, uh, you'll just have only the tube and uh, no lip plate. So for like a, a piccolo beginner, to have a lip plate like this could be very useful and make it a little bit easier to play. The embouchure cut is fairly square. Um, looks pretty nice. There you go. Okay, let's move on to the body. Oop, all right. Inside the body, I found this cleaning rod. This is fine for now, 
But for you, after uh, if you were to buy this piccolo and to use it, I would recommend storing the cleaning rod in the outside pocket uh, rather than rattling around inside the body. It's just a little bit safer there. Also, if you have a cloth attached to it, if there's any moisture in the cloth, you don't want to keep that inside the body where it could cause the pads to expand and contract. Rather, just um, you know, keep all cleaning supplies in this outside pocket. That's what it's there for, and it's a good use of that. So similar to on the Glory Flute, you can see there are some of these little wedges, I guess I would call them, plastic wedges um, under the key arms. And that's just to keep the keys, you can see it keeps them closed uh, so that they're not rattling around and moving in transport. So in order to be able to play this, I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove some of those. So I think if I just maybe gently depress yeah, as I'm going to gently depress the key as I go along, and then it should just slide out. There's one. Okay, there's the last one. Um, so all the keys seem to be moving. Okay. There is a slightly bent spring in the trills. Um, which I don't like the look of, but it might not affect the playing that much out of the box. If you're wondering what this gadget is, this is kind of like a finger rest. When we're dealing with metal, metal piccolos, for example, sometimes the bore of this, the width, can be slightly more narrow than if we're dealing with like a plastic piccolo or a wood piccolo. So to help your hand fit, I think that's what that finger rest is for. And it just makes it a little more ergonomic um, and makes the finger uh, reach a little bit better. So on the Amazon listing, we don't get very much information about the technical specs other than it's pitched in the key of C and that it's closed hole uh, and silver plated, which is again, not much information. For a piccolo to be closed hole is not very remarkable. Most modern piccolos are closed hole. The only time that you'll see an open hole piccolo, and that's open hole I say in quotations, because what you'll really get is like a ring, a metal ring um, around the tone hole. Um, the only time I've seen that is maybe in like early 20th century piccolos or earlier. Uh, so in modern piccolos, all piccolos are closed hole. So that's neither here nor there. Other than that, everything looks pretty normal, pretty standard. I was curious if there was going to be a split E, but there is not on this piccolo. So that's just something to note. I'm also going to see if this screwdriver fits and to see if there's anything loose before I try to play it. Okay. Pretty good. There was one uh, one screw that was just a tad loose, but not not terrible. Um, also, I would note that I don't see any adjustment screws, which I think is pretty normal for pic for piccolos. Um, but that means that all the fine adjustment is done with paper. You're not able to do that on your own. You would need to take it to a professional to get that done. So I am going to go ahead and put this piccolo together and we'll go ahead and do some play tests. For my play test of the Glory Piccolo, I'm gonna start with a full range test, followed by short snippets from the Vivaldi Piccolo Concerto and John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever. how you guys play with this. It's slipping all over the place.
Okay, so here are some initial impressions after that play test. First of all, I have no idea how you guys play with these gloves on. My hands were slipping all over the place. I feel like I could not get a good grip anywhere. So if you're able to play with these marching band gloves on, you are basically my hero. Well done. Now let's talk a little bit about the ease of playing. I was able to get from the lowest note, a low D, all the way up to a high C with moderate ease. I won't say that it was totally easy, but neither was it that difficult. I would give it maybe a B or a B minus as far as ease of playing. However, I do have something to say about the scale of this instrument, and the scale is how scientifically they place the tone holes along the tubing, the spacing of the tone holes, and how that affects the intonation. As I went up the chromatic scale, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I think the spacing of the intervals was a little bit uneven. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. Especially around G, G sharp, very flat. So some of these inconsistencies could make it a little bit difficult if I were trying to play in tune with others. However, depending on the circumstance, and let's say we're, you were using this in marching band, it might not be um, a very audible issue for you. As far as tone quality goes, I would probably give this a C plus or maybe even a C. It's not that great. Neither is it a total fail. It's not as terrible as it could be, but this piccolo doesn't belong in a concert hall. On a marching field, maybe among 10 other piccolos and a bunch of brass instruments where it's not heard up close, sure, it could definitely do the job. I'm now gonna read the top positive and negative reviews from Amazon. And let's start with the positive one, five stars, First impression, wow, triple exclamation point. I really didn't have super high expectations for this piccolo, but when I opened the box, I was very surprised. It is very beautiful with unexpected French pointed keys. And I didn't really understand what this person was talking about because I don't see anything special here, but I think they're talking about the keys on the back. You see they have these little points on the cups which you might see kind of on some high-end flutes. I guess it's, sure, it's pretty. I'll give that to them. I read all the mixed reviews, but at this price point and for my personal needs, I decided to give this piccolo a try. I ordered it this morning and was delivered in about 10 hours later. Wow, that's pretty quick. I do have several piccolos, but the cost to repad one now, $300 is really more than I want to spend just to see if I want to rekindle my interest. So that is kind of a common thread among a lot of these cheap piccolos and flutes. It costs a lot to repair the flute that I have or the piccolo that I have, and I just wanna see if I'm interested in pursuing this further. And maybe this would be okay for that. Where I would have said that for the Mendini flute, for example, uh, that you can see in one of my previous reviews, I'm not sure I would even say that about this piccolo, just because the ease of playing, it's not that easy to play. And the keys are kind of heavy and uneven, and also the scale is a bit uneven. So I'm not sure that I would use this as like a beginner instrument, or even for someone that just wants to test it out. Um, in this case, I might try and spend a little bit more, just because you might end up frustrating yourself more than the benefit you're gonna get out of it. It's kind of late, so I haven't tried to play in the third octave so that I don't disturb the neighbors. Well, that's very nice. Um, I did play up to the third octave and it is possible and it's um, reasonably okay to play in the third octave of this piccolo. Let's see if there's anything else from this review. So they say when inserting and removing the mouthpiece, meaning the head joint, uh, to hold by the barrel and not grabbing the rods and keys. This is actually excellent advice. Who would have thought you find it in an Amazon review? But nonetheless, it's excellent advice not to squeeze on the keys or the rods. Just hold the barrel and you should be able to twist. Um, if it doesn't twist easily, 
then you could go over it, like I said, with some rubbing alcohol and a cloth on both ends to try and clean that out a little bit, and it should slide in fairly easy. If it doesn't, um, especially if it doesn't out of the box, then I might consider returning it. Now I'm going to read the top negative review on Amazon. I picked this pick up because I needed something to reteach myself how to read music, but I didn't want to spend an arm and a leg. Okay, I understand that. It's serving that purpose, but I use the term serving loosely. Ooh. Number one, you cannot get the head cork out of the head joint. It will not budge. This means you cannot do any fine tune adjustments to your tuning. Well, that is just wrong. First of all, if you haven't seen my video on head corks and how to test your head cork, please check that out. Your head cork shouldn't move and you shouldn't be trying to move it. The head cork is not the place to be doing fine tuning. All you should be doing is pushing in or pulling out. And the head cork should be really solid, very tight, and should not budge. And I'm looking down this review, this person writes, I've been trying for a few weeks to get the head cork loose until I finally broke the bolt today. Oh, yikes. So I don't think you should be doing that. Um, it's wrong. It's, uh, yeah, it's not correct. Uh, it's not good for the flute. Yeah, your head joint cork should be solid. Please don't move it. This person also says about the Glory Piccolo, it is constructed with cheap materials. The G sharp A flat key is beginning to bend on my pick when it shouldn't be. Yikes, that is problematic and very troubling to hear. Um, like I said, some of the spring tension is so heavy that I feel like I have to push really hard in order to get some of these keys to open. So I wouldn't be surprised if that lent itself to some key bending. And if that's happening, that's not a good thing. Three, the supplied cloth is okay, but the cleaning rod is not long enough to go all the way through the pick. That means you have to clean from both ends and hope that the center gets cleaned enough not to rot your pads out. Uh, so I wanted to test that. The cleaning rod is not long enough to go all the way through the pick. Yeah, this is fine. The length is fine. Let me see if I can get a cloth through. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull a little bit through the loop. I'm going to wrap some around the top and fold it over. Then I have a little nubbin at the top, and I'm gonna use that to swab the inside. Okay, goes into the head joint pretty well. Let me see about the body. Fine. That was a little bit difficult to fit in, in which case I'm just gonna use a little bit less cloth and I bet it'll get to the middle just fine. That swab seems totally fine to me. So let's see if there's anything else pertinent in this review. Am I glad I bought this? Yes and no. I'm glad I have it because now I can get used to reading music again, but that's about it. I would never take this pick to a community band and pretend it's something worth playing in an ensemble. Don't buy it for your children to learn on at school. Spend the money and buy a quality instrument. If you want one just to fart around with and play on occasion or to give your child as a toy, go for it. Just don't expect it to knock anyone's socks off. I agree. It's not gonna knock anyone's socks off, nor would I even play this in a community band. However, in a marching setting, I think it would be fine. In summary, this Glory Piccolo is basically cheap. You can find it on Amazon for about 69 to $79, depending on what color you want to get. And unlike some of the Amazon flutes I've reviewed in the past, I would not say that you're getting more value for the money you're paying. In this case, I would say that you're getting exactly what you pay for. Now, does that mean this piccolo is useless? Absolutely not. I would say that in certain situations, such as marching band, it could be actually very useful. If we're thinking about playing outdoors, 
in football stadium stands, on the marching field, where it has to be subjected to the elements, you don't wanna take a nice instrument out into those conditions. And in that case, maybe you want to spend $70 on this glory piccolo and use it for a season. It can play all the notes you need to play. And if you're not being too picky about intonation or tone quality, as probably you're not on the marching field, then it's totally adequate and maybe even a good solution for that. Do you have any thoughts about this glory piccolo or any experience playing it that you wanna share? Please let me know in the comments. Also, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and have gotten some use out of it. If so, please let me know by giving the video a like and in the comments. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.